In this video, you're going to learn how to create a simple web server with a ESP8266 to control outputs. The web server you'll build can be accessed with any device that has a browser in your local network. Before going straight to the project, it's important to outline what the web server will do, so that it's easier to follow the steps later on. The web server you'll build controls two LEDs connect to the ESP8266 GPIOS 4 and 5. You can access the ESP web server by typing the ESP IP address on a browser in your local network. By clicking the buttons on your web server page, you can instantly change the state of each LED. This is just a simple example to illustrate how to build a web server. The idea is to replace those LEDs with a relay or any other electronic component you want to control. Start by building the circuit. Connect two LEDs to your ESP as shown in the following schematic diagram, with one LED connected to GPIO5 and another to GPIO4. After wiring the circuit, the next step is uploading the code to your ESP. Make sure you have the ESP8266 add-on installed in your Arduino IDE. Copy the code provided in the project page to your Arduino IDE, but don't upload it yet. You need to make some changes to make it work for you. You need to modify these two variables with your network credentials. Type your SSID and password so that your ESP can establish a connection with your router. Now you can upload the code and it will work straight away. Don't forget to check if you have the right board and COM port selected. Open the serial monitor at a baud rate of 11.5200. The ESP connects to Wi-Fi and outputs the ESP IP address on the serial monitor. Copy that IP address, because you need it to access the web server. Open your browser, type the ESP IP address and you'll see this page. This page is sent by the ESP when you make a request to the ESP IP address. If you take a look at the serial monitor, you can see what's going on on the background. The ESP receives an HTTP request from a new client, in this case your browser. You can also see other information about the HTTP request. These fields are called HTTP header fields and they define the operating parameters of an HTTP transaction. Let's test the web server. Click the button to turn GPIO5 on. The ESP receives a request on the slash 5 slash on URL and turns LED5 on. The LED state is also updated on the web page. Test the GPIO4 button and check that it works in a similar way. Now let's take a closer look at the code to see how it works. The first thing you need to do is to include the Wi-Fi library. As mentioned previously, you need to insert your SSID and password inside the double quotes. Then, this line sets your web server to port 80. This line declares a string variable to store the header of the HTTP request. Here you create some variables to store the current state of your outputs. If you want to add more outputs and save the corresponding state, you need to create more variables. You also need to assign a GPIO to each of your outputs. In this case, we're using GPIO5 and GPIO4. You can use any other suitable GPIOs. Now, let's see what happens in the setup. The setup function only runs once when your ESP first boots. First, we start a serial communication at a baud rate of 11.5200 for debugging purposes. You also define your GPIOs as outputs and set them to low. To start a Wi-Fi connection, Use the Wi-Fi.begin function, wait for a successful connection, and then the ESP IP address is printed in the serial monitor. In the loop we program what happens when a new client establishes a connection with the web server. The ESP is always listening for incoming clients with this line. When a request is received from a client, we'll save the incoming data. This while loop will be running as long as the client stays connected. We don't recommend changing this part of the code unless you know exactly what you're doing. 
This section of ifandl statement checks which button was pressed in your web page and controls the outputs accordingly. As we've seen previously, we make a request on different URLs depending on the button we press. For example, if you've pressed GPIO5 on, the URL changes to the ESPIP address followed by slash 5 slash on, and we receive that information on the HTTP header. So we can check if the header contains the expression get slash 5 slash on. If it contains, the code prints a message on the serial monitor, changes the output 5 state variable to on, and turns the LED on. This works similarly for the other buttons, so if you want to add more outputs, you should modify this part of the code to include them. The next thing you need to do is generate the web page. The ESP will be sending a response to your browser with some HTML text to display the web page. The web page is sent to the client using the client.println function. You should enter what you want to send to the client as an argument. The first text you should always send is this line, that indicates that we're sending HTML. Then, this line makes the web page responsive in any web browser. And this one is used to prevent requests related to the favicon. You don't need to worry about this line. Next, we have some CSS to style the buttons and the web page appearance. We choose the Alvetica font, define the content to be displayed as a block, and aligned at the center. We style our buttons with some properties to define color, size, border, etc. Here we're defining the style for a second button with all the properties of the button we've defined earlier but with a different color. This will be the style for the off button. In this line you set the first heading of your web page. You can change this text to whatever you like. This line writes a paragraph to display the GPIO5 current state. As you can see, we use the output5 state variable, so that the state updates instantly when this variable changes. Then, we display the on or the off button, depending on the current state of the GPIO. We use the same procedure for GPIO4. Finally, when the HTTP request and response ends, we clear the other variable and stop the connection with the client. In summary, now that you know how the code works, you can modify the code and duplicate some parts to add more outputs. You can find all the resources for this project in the link in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.